Okay, well, here we go. Week five of our uh, foundation series. Uh, we've talked a lot um, about helping you guys get some information and kind of lay down a good foundation. Uh, we started with the eight steps to catching more fish. Uh, we talked about uh, the five P's of successful fishing, uh, planning a trip, preserving the information, uh, preparation for a trip. We talked about uh, pattern fishing, how to take all the information on the water and kind of make adjustments and get catch more fish. And then we last week we talked about bait fish, kind of understanding how important it was to know where bait fish are at certain times of the year. And we kind of covered different species of bait fish. This seminar is called the evolution of an angler. And basically what it is, uh, in Fisherman way back in the early 80s, uh, did an article basically five steps of how you go through uh, becoming a fisherman from just starting to uh, you know being a, a, a good fisherman. And uh, I kind of expanded on it as I've been doing this for 20 years, thinking about my journey in fishing. I started out as a stream trout fisherman, did that till I was uh, middle of my teenage years and started doing some lake fishing, was a bass fisherman. Uh, yeah, I know, I know, uh, <laughs> I was. Don't say too loud. Uh, I was a bass fisherman for a while. That's how I kind of transitioned from river trout fishing into lake fishing and then got on the walleye kick uh, in the <clears throat> late 80s. So uh, I've kind of gone through all of these steps at each different way. I had to go through it for trout fishing. I had to learn it again and go through the same evolution as a bass fisherman. I had to go through this evolution as a walleye fisherman. And now I've been doing this 20 years and I see that just about uh, every guy that we talk to is somewhere in this evolutionary uh, process. And it's good to know where you are so you know, number one, what's coming next and where you kind of need to work on. And number two, I think it's always good to remember where you've been and kind of the struggles you went through and all the things that you've conquered to get to the point that you are. So let's uh, let's kind of get going with evolution of an anger. Uh, <clears throat> becoming a consistently productive anger is a process, not a destination, right? Fishing is one of those sports you can learn forever. And you should always, every time you're on the water, learn something. Uh, as we progress in our fishing ability, we'll go through many stages. We'll get stuck on several plateaus. We'll get frustrated. Uh, we'll have days of over overwhelming success and heart crushing failures. Uh, and knowing where you are on the evolution scale will help you become a better angler quicker because again, you know what you need to do to get off of where you are and get on to the next step. So let's have a little bit of fun and talk about this. Uh, why do we fish, right? Food, we all love to eat fish, uh, except me. Uh, but most of us like to eat fish. It's always great to be outdoors, be out in the fresh air. Uh, it's great recreation time, great way to spend time with our friends and family. And uh, a lot of us do it because we like the challenge, right? The challenge of catching fish. And some of us actually get to the point where we like to compete. May not be a big giant national tournament. Uh, may just be a couple guys in the boat, you know, dollar, 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 first, biggest, most. Uh, maybe a couple boats in a small derby, might be a couple boats on a little fishing trip. Competition, believe it or not, comes into a lot of our fishing. But those are basically the reasons that we that we go fishing. So let's start on this evolutionary journey and understand that we, we're going to go through this. Number one, as we become an angler. Number two, if we switch from species, let's say we're, we're really, really good walleye fisher and we want to start to learn how to catch lake trout. Uh, we basically have to go back to the start and start our whole evolution again uh, with our lake trout fishing or a different species or even a different style of body of water. Maybe you grew up fishing small inland lakes with weeds and now you're trying to conquer the Great Lakes. It all starts over again. So we've got to kind of go back and kind of see where we are each time we make adjustments. So what is a beginner fisherman, right? Happy to catch anything. Uh, most days are disappointing, but our expectations are always high. Remember those days, you just couldn't wait to go fishing, right? You grabbed your pole, you grabbed your bike, went with your buddies over the farm pond. I can remember going to the farm pond behind our uh, neighborhood, backpack, lunch, fishing rod, bike. I bet you there wasn't more than four bullheads in the whole pond. But we'd go over there and we would spend hour after hour after hour fishing just because we wanted to go fishing. Beginners often say, hey, I just like being on the water and that's great. And usually as a beginner, you know, we've got dad, grandpa, uncle Joe's tackle. We just got some stuff we found in the garage and we just want to go. We enjoy fishing. Uh, as a beginner though, we have a tendency usually, especially as we get older, um, we only fish a few times a year but we love to go. We can't wait to go because we just love to do it, even though we don't get a chance to do it a lot. Uh, we ask a lot of questions as a beginner, but usually we get bad advice because we're talking to other people who really don't know. We haven't really met good anglers yet. So we're asking a lot of questions and the answers we get usually aren't good. Uh, and almost always we have no plan, right? We're not, we're not going bluegill fishing or we're just going fishing. If something pulls our string, we are really happy 
it's been a good day. Um, we're just out trying to enjoying fishing. If you skip through that process and you like fishing, which most people do at this point, uh, you'll become what I call a learner. I like fishing, I just want to get a little bit better. You start the process of learning, you start going to seminars. Maybe, you know, this may seem weird to some of the younger guys in the crowd, but reading books, oh my goodness. Um, you know, we sit and read books and magazines and, and you know, I've got, I can show you magazines and books highlighted and dog-eared, notes on the, on the margins. That's how I learned was, was that. Uh, watching TV, again, something we don't do a lot anymore, but I can remember my fishing buddy and I, even in high school, couldn't wait for Saturday morning. We'd get up Saturday morning, there'd be in Fisherman was on and Bill Dance was on and Virgil Ward was on and um, uh, a couple other guys, a guy used to wear the Atlanta, Orlando Wilson. Uh, and we would sit there and we'd watch TVs and we'd take notes and I'd either be at his house or my house. And when the shows were over, either my mom or his mom would drive us to the little tackle store, the old fishing tackle grand bag used to be an old barn. And we would buy some stuff from that week's show, right? Maybe we had enough money to buy one crankbait or a couple spinner blades, but that's how, how we learned we had a great time. Uh, at this point, you usually have a couple of favorite pros that you listen to. Uh, I feel very, very fortunate that as I became a learner, um, the fishing education process was really good. I got a chance to start, I got hooked really quick on guys like El Lindner, the In Fisherman Group. Uh, I got hooked real quick on guys like Tony Dean. Uh, Babe Winkleman, even guys who actually taught fishing, they didn't just sell product. Um, so I really got to like those guys, and I hope a lot of that comes through in the way I teach nowadays. We'll start to buy some tackle based on the recommendation of the pros. We start to build our own little tackle box, but again, we're still not catching a lot of fish. Uh, at this point, we'll probably upgrade our tackle, might buy our first rod and reel by ourselves, but again, we're usually getting advice from pros on TV who don't really fish the way we do, or we're not really listening to what they're telling us. Uh, or again, we got one or two friends that fish a little bit more than we do and we think they're experts. Uh, our catch doesn't really increase because as we get more fishing knowledge, we're trying to figure out how to use it. Maybe we don't have a boat, we don't have a place to get to a good lake. Uh, frustration might start to set in. And I would tell you this, as I've done this for 20 years, this is where we start to lose a lot of guys. They start to buy their first little bit of tackle, their first not good rods and reels, and they just don't have access to get out and see their catch increase based on the kind of time and money they spent. That's where we lose a lot of guys. If we lose them here, we're never ever gonna get them back. So if you have somebody in your life here, be it a young kid or a neighbor, uh, it is important that us as well, I want one guys, um, kind of follow our mantra, teach and fish, and that's our mission. It's important if you have one of these guys in your life or your neighborhood that you get them in your boat and you take the things that you know that you're becoming a better fisherman, catching more fish, it's important you get these guys in your boat and show them how to do what they need to do, okay? All right, Stead Street, uh-oh. Some of you are still here, huh? Yeah, a couple of guys pointing. Some of you guys are still here. I call this step three, this is the stuff guy, right? And if you remember back to when you first really got into fishing, uh, we all go through the stuff guy phase. Uh, it's gotta be about the stuff. The more stuff I have, the more fish I'm gonna catch. Um, we start by whatever is pitched by anybody we hear. We hear a seminar, we take notes, we buy six baits. We sit through another seminar, we buy six more. We, we just constantly are buying crap that guys tell us we need to buy because it's gotta be about the stuff. That guy's catching more fish, he's got more stuff, it must be about the stuff. We're still learning about fishing, we're still trying to learn how to catch more fish, but we really don't wanna learn the real secret, right? And if you go back to our eight steps and our uh, pattern fishing, and our five Ps, we tell you what the real secret of fishing success is. Uh, we don't want to learn, we're trying to learn, but we really don't think that it's about that, we think it's about the stuff. Stuff guy wants to use his stuff every time he goes fishing. All right, he's got six rods and reels, he's got three tackle boxes, he wants to bring them on every trip and use everything he's got. Uh, unfortunately for this guy, fishing success never increases as fast as his collection of stuff. So he brings his frustration with him all the time. I got all this stuff, why can't I catch fish? Uh, after buying all the stuff and not catching more fish, he starts to become weary of pitchmen. And I listened to that guy about all the things he told me, but I didn't catch anything. And I, uh, I'm not going to listen to anybody anymore. Uh, he wants to have enough stuff, so sometimes he saves money and sacrifices quality. So he may have six rods and reels, but doesn't have one single good one. Uh, he may have a bunch of crankbaits, but they're all imitation Chinese knockoffs that don't run straight. He wants to have a lot of stuff instead of having the right stuff for each job he's doing. Uh, and here's the problem. He has so much of the wrong stuff at this point, it becomes tough to save the money and actually buy the right stuff. 
So he's kind of stuck. Another place that we lose some guys because they spent money and don't have it. And here's where the first plateau comes in. And we're talking about growth and then kind of leveling out. Uh, here's where we start to lose, again, a lot of guys here. They're spending money, but they don't see any results, so why spend more, okay? Uh, buying too much of the wrong equipment means this guy is never able to really master technique. If he doesn't find somebody soon who can mentor him and teach him and show him what the right way is, uh, we're going to lose him. He's just not going to want to go fishing. It's too hard to find time to go fishing, and if I spend all this money not going to catch anything, I'm going to do something else. we got to really watch to see if we have any of these guys in our lives, in our neighborhoods, in our church, uh, wherever we are, because if we do, we've got to get them on the water because we can, we can bring them back to fishing. But this is kind of the first plateau. I'm sure a lot of you went through this, and you got to a point where it's like, man, I just, that's not frustrating. Some guys quit. Some of you, probably all of you, kept pushing through, pushing through, pushing through, and figured out how to get off this plateau. And that took you to the next step. And that's what I call the shotgun fisherman, okay? Um, a lot of us, some of you guys are still stuck here, huh? Don't point fingers. Some of you guys are still stuck here. Uh, fish is for whatever's biting, right? I love it. Going fishing, yeah, what are you fishing for? Ah, whatever I bite. Well, we know, right, with what we've, we've been taught, that you have to concentrate on a certain type of fish, depending on the kind of body of water you're on, the time of year, what kind of bait fish. That all kind of goes to where you're fishing. Shotgun fisherman doesn't get that yet. He fishes for whatever, whatever's biting. Uh, he may have some good days, but he's still mostly struggling. Most days he goes out and doesn't catch a lot. Uh, and he may get out of school of three hours into the day, seven inch bluegills, and he stays there all day just so he can catch something. He's happy catching seven inch bluegills. Uh, still focused on equipment and lures instead of what is important, okay? Uh, never has a plan of attack. He just kind of goes out and goes, ah, there's a couple guys over there and I heard about this and there's a guy over there, you know, always looking for the next hot bite, right? He heads to the lake with dozens of rods and too much tackle, but he's ready for anything, all right? If they're biting on purple and green hoochie hoochies, I got a couple, I, I guarantee I got a couple. He's got a little bit of everything, but never really knows what he's doing. Spends a lot, this is my favorite about stuff, or, uh, this shotgun fisherman. Spends a lot of time changing lures. Because it's got to be about the lure, right? And I'm not catching them on a worm. I can catch them on a crankbait. Can't catch them on a crankbait. I'm going to throw a jig. Can't catch them on a jig. I'm going to throw a chatterbait. Can't catch them on a uh, rep, rep stick. I'm going to catch them on a... I don't care. You know the guy, right? You've been there. Always constantly changing lures. He believes that the fish are caught because of the lure he's using. Because at some point during most fishing days, he's going to stumble across the spot where there's fish that want to bite. He thinks it's because of the lure he fished. And then what happens is he has favorite lures that get fished too much now. He's got one or two that he had success on, and those now become his favorite lures. Even though they're not the right lure to use, that becomes his favorite. Okay, He's starting to, a little bit of success, but starting to struggle. If we can get a guy past here, guy at this point usually becomes what I call the techie angler. If we can get him past... The shotgun fisherman, he's out fishing, he's caught some fish, he's kind of like, you know what, I want to become a fisherman. This is where the guy usually starts to buy his first set of quality electronics. He understands the quality of having something better than a $99 fish finder, right? He, under, he starts to learn that sonar is important and looking for fish is important, seeing weeds is important. Uh, nowadays, he may look at a, a unit with side scan or down scan. Uh, he wants to use his GPS, right? Uh, he wants to get better and he thinks that having electronics is a way to do it, and it is. But you gotta be careful because here we go again, he starts to spend a lot of money and his results usually don't correspond to the money he spent. Spends five, six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred dollars on a sonar, doesn't know how to use it, goes out, can't find any more fish. Why did I spend this money? Now he's stuck again. But usually after we get them to a shotgun anger and they are catching a little bit of fish, they still don't understand why, they'll become a techie, right? He starts to spend more time on the water. He has good electronics but he really doesn't know how to use them yet. So what happens is his catch rate may actually drop because he's got all this time he's trying to learn to lose his electronics and he's not using them right. So he's really not using them to help him find more fish and fish where there's more fish. He's spending time playing with his electronics and not using them right. So he starts to, his catch rate actually starts to go down. If he's serious about it though and he sticks with it and he finds somebody to kind of show him a little bit how to use the sonar, this is when the real learning starts to take place. And I would tell you, not to hurt anybody's feelings or anything, but I would tell you that this is where I found most of you guys. Uh, most of you guys, the first time I found you, were somewhere between shotgun guy, who kind of liked to catch fish and change lures and you know caught some sometimes and sometimes didn't, 
and a lot of you guys I caught right here after you got into your first piece of electronics, right? This is kind of where I caught you, and you weren't catching more fish, but once you kind of bought into what we were doing, finding fish first, learning how to use your sonar are important, then you started to catch more fish. So this is where I caught a lot of you guys. So some of you are probably four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe 10 years removed from this. Uh, some of you guys are still kind of right in here, right? Um, doesn't mean you haven't done some of the things in the other steps, but you're still kind of right in here. So this is where we find a lot of our Walleye 101 guys. Um, good place to find guys, okay? All right, if you kind of start to become a techie, you start to learn some more, uh, use electronics, most people go to the next step and everybody in here, I guarantee you has been at this next stage. I know I was for a long time. I call that home late guy, okay? The home late guy. You start to see some su success, but usually only on one specific body of water. Hey, I fish Lake Nepsian, or I'm, you know, Fen Lake Fenton or Houghton Lake, whatever it is. I got one body of water that I feel comfortable I can go catch him. Uh, he has favorite spots on that lake. And he's certain that if he tells anybody about them, fish are going to all be gone. Okay, he doesn't understand how fish move, but he knows that spot's good. And if I tell anybody, poof, I'm not going to have any fish to catch. Uh, he starts to become very selective about who he shares information with because he doesn't want people to give up his secrets and go to his spot, right? The problem is when you do that and you only talk to people that fish exactly the same way you do in the exact same place, your growth as an anger stops because you're only learning what you already know. So you kind of it's kind of a cycle where you don't learn anything. Uh, but here's the good part about this. He starts to feel good about his fishing. He's catching fish consistently. He's on the water most days he's catching fish. He has an idea of where the fish are gonna be. Maybe he's got four or five spots different times of the year. He's kind of starting to put some of the ideas of becoming a good fisherman together. Uh, fishes his home lake most often, has a little success. Uh, this is the one that always bugs me, right? He only fishes at productive times of year and or the day. Yeah, no, I, I, don't, I don't fish after the 1st of July. Why not? Well, you know, fishing's tough. Well, okay, but how do you learn to catch fish in tough times if you're not out fishing? Because uh, to him, the success is what's important, right? And we're going to talk about that uh, in the next step here. He's starting to grow as an angler, but he still doesn't really realize why fishing is good or bad. He doesn't know how to adapt to weather patterns, times of the year. Uh, weather conditions. He knows he's got spots and sometimes they're good and sometimes they're bad. He doesn't quite know why yet. Uh, he's not aware of patterns, doesn't get that, and he definitely focuses too much on tackle and the lure. He's got three or four lures that work. He may only have a small tackle box, right? We all know home lake guy, right? He fishes one lake and he's got one tackle box because that's all he's going to use. If it's right or wrong, doesn't matter, but that's all he's going to tie on. Um, that's our home lake guy, okay? So again, all of you have kind of been through this, and here is again where we hit our second plateau. And here's where I caught a lot of you guys, it's kind of in this part of the second plateau, and here's where you have to be careful as an angler, okay? Knowing only one lake is the fastest way to slow your growth, um, unless you're aware of what you're actually being taught. And I went through this really hard at Lake Nipsey. Uh, most anglers at this point cannot take what they know from their home lake and apply it elsewhere. My lake is different. Yeah, that's okay, but I fish here. Well, here's what I can tell you from my experience tournament fishing. I spent close to 10 years traveling around the country fishing different levels of walleye tournaments. And I have fished walleye from east end of Lake Erie all the way out to Fort Peck, Montana, from Lake of the Woods, Ontario, the north end of Lake of the Woods, all the way down to Bull Shoals, Arkansas, and everywhere in between, okay? I can tell you this, the lessons that I learned on Lake Nepsian, a shallow, uh, dirty water, weedy lake, those fish act exactly the same in that same style of lake in Iowa, in South Dakota, in Missouri, Southern Illinois. Those fish act exactly the same. So what you have to understand, no matter where you're fishing and what you're doing, if you understand how your lake works, you can take all of that and apply it to a lake just like yours everywhere else. Those are the lessons if you're gonna become home lake guy, you have to take with you. It can't just be your lake, it has to be what are you learning about this type of lake everywhere else that you go, okay? A lot of guys get stuck here and never leave here. They never leave here, especially guys that have a place on a lake, right? They buy a lake, they put the boat in the spring, take it out in the fall, the boat never leaves anywhere else. They fish one body of water, where they know how to catch them at the certain time of day and year they catch them, that's the only time they fish. I guess that's all right, but I want more on my fishing, I think most of you guys probably do too. Okay, so next stage. We'll call it expansion guy, right? We've gotten over the home lake stuff. We started to catch some fish. We're getting a little more confidence. 
Uh, we want to get out and fish. Maybe we found another fishing buddy or two. Now is when things start to happen, right? We want to start learning other lakes, techniques. I know how to catch them on crankbaits. I want to learn how to catch them on spinners. I know how to catch them on spinners. I want to catch them on spoons. Uh, I know for me, bass fishing, uh, one of the things that I wanted to learn how to do one time in my, in, when I started bass fishing is I want to learn how to fish plastic worms, right? I could catch them on crankbaits. I catch them on top water. I want to learn how to fish worms. So you know what I did one summer? I spent one whole summer, every time I went fishing, I went with a hundred bag of brown worms and a hundred bag of blue worms, a bunch of worm hooks, a couple different size worm weights, and two fishing rods. That's it. I learned how to fish plastic worms in two feet of water and how to fish plastic worms in 60 feet of water. And by the time that season was over, I could catch fish on plastic worms any place they swam. But that's what I did. I didn't keep going back to an hour. I didn't catch my worm, grab the bait, I know how to work. Okay. If you want to learn how to fish something, we've told you guys this about trolling. You want to learn how to fish spoons? Fish all summer. Don't take a collar harness or a crankbait in your boat. You'll figure it out. Okay. That's where this expansion starts to begin. You seek out anglers who know different techniques and lakes, right? I'm really good on the Detroit River. I don't know anything about Saginaw Bay. You're really good on Saginaw Bay. Let's go fishing. I'll take you to the river. You take me to the bay. You teach me what you know. I'll teach you what I know. That's where this whole thing starts to become good. This is your first step towards becoming a truly good angler. Here's you gotta be careful though. Your success may start to go down as you start to learn new techniques, presentation, and locations. You're not an expert yet, but you're constantly trying to learn new things. So don't expect that your fishing's gonna stay up here. It may actually drop a little bit because you're out of your comfort zone a little bit. And here's what's important, and I hope this is where I found some of you guys. You start to seek out teachers that you can trust. Who's going to give me good information? They're not just going to try to sell me a bait from their new company they're sponsored with this year. Who's going to give me good information? Who's going to help me really learn how to fish? Who's going to teach me the process? Um, this is where this starts to happen. You usually at this point, as you start to expand, get serious uh, about learning good solid fishing information, right? You want to kind of learn a lot. Uh, you start to understand pattern fishing. You understand, hey, you know, when the cloud cover I catch fish here, when the sun's up I catch fish here, you're starting to understand how these little subtle shifts in weather, ways, water color, water clarity, lure color, lure shape. You're starting to get a little understanding of how all this works and helps you catch more fish. Uh, you start to get serious about your equipment at this point. And some of you I, I know for a fact have been through this with us. Uh, you sell your stuff or you pass your stuff on to somebody else and you start to buy the right tackle. Hey, I want to be a serious open water troller. I need four line counter combos, same rod, same reel, all calibrated, same line. I can't have three different hodgepodge rods and reels. If I want to do it right, I got to have the right stuff. Here's all my old crap, garage sale. I'm going to buy the right stuff, okay? A lot of you have been through that with us. Uh, I appreciate it. I'm sure your wives don't, but I appreciate it. Um, but that's kind of how that happens. You, you start to realize that I need the right equipment to do this properly, and this is where it happens, okay? All right, so here you got to be careful because... You'll come into a spot where uh, I've seen some of you stuck. Uh, some of you still are stuck here. Uh, you become what I call one hit wonder. Uh, as your growth continues, uh, you find a presentation that works all the time and it becomes your favorite regardless of the conditions. Uh, you may even become really, really, really good at that presentation, but that's all you're gonna use. Uh, your tackle selection trends towards your favorite presentation. You may have 3,750 spinner blades and have two crankbaits because you're a spinner fisherman, okay? Uh, you tend to fish only with other anglers who fish the same presentation. Or you get somebody else in the boat, you go, I'll fish my side, you fish your side. So you can do what you want to do on your side of the boat. Uh, and it often at this point, often coincides with choosing a specific target species to concentrate on. All right, I love throwing top water for largemouth bass. I love trolling spinners for walleye. I love casting bucktails for muskie. So you become that thing. You become a one hit wonder, right? One species, one presentation. Tendencies of a one hit wonder, okay? And you guys need to really look at yourselves. There's someone here I'm gonna tell a little story on here in just a second. You try, you know what I'm gonna tell, right? Yeah? You try to make the conditions fit the presentation, not the other way around. You're gonna catch one. You wanna catch them on regardless if it's the right bait or not. You'll have some good days, but you'll also have some poor fishing days because the presentation you're using is completely wrong for the conditions. Again, you start to limit your knowledge by only fishing with people who fish like you do. You don't want somebody in the boat telling you to do it different. You're taking a fish and darn it, you're gonna do it your way and that's what they're gonna do, even if it's wrong, okay? 
you hardly ever experiment or you hardly ever try other presentations. And this is an extremely dangerous time because you are catching some fish and you're really good at what you do, but there's times that what you're good at doing isn't right. Let me back up and tell a little story. We did one of our uh, Saginaw Bay four day fishing education weekends um, a couple years ago on Saginaw Bay and it was called Spoon Fed Walleye. And it's when the spoon bite really got good on Saginaw Bay and we wanted to teach guys how to spoon fish. Sorry. So what we did was we, we did a group and we did our meeting Thursday night at dinner. We talked about fishing. And so, okay, tomorrow what I want you to do is I want you to go out and I want you to fish spoons. And we taught guys how to fish spoons with inline weights, it's a very easy way to do it. And we did a little bit on fishing divers. We wanted guys to at least get spoons in the water, see what they did on Friday, and then get back together Friday night and then talk some more and have them go out Saturday and learn how to fish spoons. So we get back and we're talking to the guys. I think we had you know 10 or 12 boats there. And you know, this boat's got one or two, and this boat's got three or four, and this boat's got one, and this boat's got two. And I come up on Al's boat, and Al's got a limit. I'm like, way to go, Al, great job. He says, well, huh? I says, what do you mean, well? He says, we caught him on crawlers. I'm like, Al, he goes, well, we tried spoons for a couple hours, we weren't getting bit. I says, Al, I know that you can catch them on crawlers. The point of this weekend is not to catch fish on crawlers. It's to learn how to fish spoons. Because, yeah, we tried, but I said, no buts. You know, good job catching fish, I guess. But we're trying to teach you how to fish spoons. So the next day, Al comes back in. And again, they've got more fish than everybody else. And I looked at him. He kind of says, well, we did half and half. But one side was spoons and one side was crawlers. He said, we caught some fish on crawlers, but we caught a couple on the spoons. I said, all right, Al. Well, the third day he went out and, you know, he caught some fish. So the third day he went out and fished all spoons. And everybody got better as the days went on. So the guys that caught two the first day, caught six the second day, caught ten the third day. They're starting to get better at spoon fishing because that's all they're doing, right? So Al comes back in and he had a nice basket of fish. And I says, he kind of smiled. He goes, all spoons. Um, and I tell you that story because now he is one of the first guys, Holloway Reservoir, shallow reservoir, no deeper than 20, 25 feet, right? A lot of the fishing we do is in 12 and 15 feet of water. Saginaw Bay on the east side where it's fairly shallow. Lake Erie. Al is one of the first guys to throw a spoon in the water now because he truly believes that they are good and can catch fish. So sometimes when you're a one hit wonder and you want to keep fishing the same thing you're comfortable with, you got to be careful because getting out of your comfort zone and learning a new technique is more important some days than catching fish. So don't get stuck here, okay? And this is where we hit our third plateau. Even though success is generally increasing, this can be very, very dangerous, guys. Uh, success is sometimes, I love this statement, success is sometimes the biggest obstacle to growth. You're catching some fish sometimes, why should you change? Uh, in the first stage of this, your success is all about the presentation because you feel confident. To become a better angler, you need to hit the second stage of the evolutionary chain, and that is where you start to realize why things are working and how little changes result in big catches, okay? So we've got to be really careful here. Once we become that one hit wonder, we start to catch some fish most of the time on a certain presentation, we don't want to get stuck here at plateau three. So everything before this is kind of learning and kind of figuring out how to get a, a presentation that actually does work and get comfortable with it. Now what we need to do if we're going to become a really good angler is get away from that and use the lessons we learned to get good at something and apply it to other techniques and also understand why we're actually catching fish, okay? So we're at our second plateau, our third plateau. Let's take a little break right here. Um, take a minute, stretch your legs. We're gonna come back and talk about the second part of this evolutionary chain, kind of where a lot of you guys, I think, really are right now and kind of get you dialed in so you can become better anglers. Let's take a little break here, we'll be right back. Okay, all right, get, uh, get settled in here. We'll get, we'll get going uh, with the rest of this. Now, hopefully at some point during uh, the first part of tonight's seminar, you kind of, a uh, couple of things, either found yourself, kind of figured out where you were and where you're at and where you kind of need to go to. Uh, or I think for most of you guys that are sitting here, I know a lot of you, uh, I've, I've watched you kind of grow in your fishing for the last four, five, six, seven, some of you, 12, 15 years. Um, Hopefully it brings back good memories to go back to some of those places where you were and kind of uh, remember when you were stuck and, and, and really kind of struggle and kind of how you got away from those places. So, so tonight was you know kind of designed to be a fun night. 
All right, so we're at Plateau 3. Uh, we've just come from uh, being a one-hit wonder. We learned a technique or, and or a body of water. We get really good at it. We catch fish most of the time. And we hit this plateau where we are catching fish, but there's still times we don't. We still think it's about, you know, the lure. I can always catch them on this. We can kind of always go back to our favorite lure. But now we need to kind of get past this plateau and move on if we really, really want to become as good an angler as we can be. All right, and the next step, usually what happens in this transition is the anger becomes what I call a limit seeker. Uh, you're getting better, but you're still focused on one presentation of body water most of the time. Uh, it becomes important to catch a limit to validate your ability to catch fish. You'd rather go out and catch your limit of 15 inch fish than go out and catch three big fish. Um, it's always important about a limit. Yeah, I got a limit. Yeah, I got a limit. Yeah, I got a limit. Uh, you know, nowadays with social media, uh, this guy won't post unless he catches a limit. Uh, if he comes in one fish short, he's not going to tell you. If he has, goes out and fishing is tough, and some days fishing is just tough, right? He goes out and he catches three, him and two buddies. He's not going to tell you even when fishing, right? Uh, it becomes important to catch a limit. He brags about the neighborhood fish fry. Uh, he supplies the neighbors with fish. Can't wait to tell everybody how good he did, right? Uh, his daily success is only achieved by catching a limit as fast as possible. These guys drive me nuts, right? I got a limit in 48 minutes, was home. Well, you had a day off to go fishing. Why the hell do you want to be home in 48 minutes? Don't you want to go out and spend the day and maybe this is the kind of days, if the fishing's really fast, right? You should be doing what after you get your limit? Trying a new technique, putting new baits in front of these fish, learning how to catch some fish, trying a different area, right? So, but it becomes all about, at this point, it becomes all about the limit. Look at me, look at me, look at me, I caught a limit, okay? Uh, this guy usually only fishes when and where conditions are right for good fishing. Fishing's tough, he ain't going. He's always got an excuse, ain't going. Boat doesn't work, motor's not right, got this, got that. Fishing gets good again, he hears day or two, fishing's good, he's back on the water. Uh, has a very, very small group of fishing friends, usually all at the same stage. They want to get out, get their limit as fast as they can, be done, look at us, look at us, look at us. Uh, he may never say he went fishing if he doesn't catch a limit. He doesn't even tell people. He focuses on catching the limit, not understanding the process of how he caught that limit or why he caught it, when, where, and how he did. And he gets his limit, he's done, no time to experiment. How fast can I get home? Okay? That's our limit seeker guy. And believe it or not, right away, we just started after the break, we talked about the first, the third plateau. Right away now, when you get to this point, we're in on our fourth plateau already, okay? Plateaus start to become, the more we learn, the plateaus become faster. They come quicker. They come harder to get over. Uh, a large amount of success, even with a single species, presentation or location, can slow or even stop the growth of some anglers. This is what I do. This is when I do it. This is how I do it. Done. That's all I'm going to do. I'm a great fisherman on Saginaw Bay. April, May, June. July hits, I don't fish anymore. I got something else to do. I would say this is the toughest plateau to get over because the question in the fisherman's mind is this, why should I change if I'm catching fish most of the time? Okay? Can't argue with that if all you want to do is catch fish most of the time. I want to catch as many fish as possible and be the higher end of the number of fish caught by all the anglers every single day. Some days that means if I catch eight and everybody else has caught three, I'm actually more happy on those days than if I catch 20 and everybody else has got 20. That's my thought as an anchor. Everybody else has got 20 and I got 20. That's a good day, but I really didn't accomplish anything. I want everybody else to catch three and I catch five. Everybody else has four and I have 10. Now I've done something better. That's my mindset. That's not everybody's mindset. Some guys are happy just to go out seven, eight days out of 10, catch their limit as fast as they can, get home. That's okay. Keep fishing. Keep buying stuff from us. We'll, we'll be more than happy to sell you what you want to use. But this is a tough plateau to get over. I know you guys are here because you don't want to just settle right here. This is uh, another great saying. The biggest obstacle to learning is the illusion of knowledge. And that's what happens. You think you got it figured out. You think you're a good fisherman. But the minute one of the parameters change, or we take you out of your comfort zone, or we take you to an inland lake that you got to catch walleyes and four feet of water in the weeds, you can't do it. Okay? So you think you're a good fisherman, but you're not because you really haven't become a well-rounded angler. All right, if you get past that plateau, stage 10, uh, your horizons expand. You start to share success stories. You start to find other anglers having success doing different things in different places. I'm at the fish cleaning station. Hey, how'd you do? I got 20 today. What'd you catch them on? Crawl harnesses. What'd you do? I got my 20. What'd you catch them on? Spoons. 
Well, guy just had the same conditions, same success on something different. Hopefully in your mind it goes, well, how fast were you going? I going two and a half. How fast are you going? I was going one mile an hour. I went through a hundred crawlers. Well, it's a whole lot easier to go two and a half miles an hour with spoons than it is to go through a hundred crawlers at a mile an hour. So hopefully at this point, something clicks in your head and go, maybe there's something to that spoon fishing, right? I might want to try that. You start to learn from your peer group as well as trusted teachers and pros or guides or again, just trusted teachers that you know are going to help you get to the next step. Uh, you may even enter a tournament or two. Uh, I would tell you it's not as prevalent as it used to be, but when I was coming up and kind of learning about walleye fishing, uh, there wasn't a lot of knowledge, especially a lot of hands-on knowledge. Uh, I fished the professional walleye trail a couple times as an amateur. Got in the boat uh, three days, different pro each day, and I just ground on them. I just asked them question after question after question. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? I, I never got off topic. I focused on what we were doing right now, but trying to figure out why they were doing it and why what they were doing worked better than something else. Um, that's still available through the, the National Walleye tr Tour. Um, or you may enter with a couple friends that you know that fish a little different than you. Maybe the Michigan Walleye Tour now with, with three guys. But you may start to enter a tournament. Uh, new ideas start to form. Fishing becomes fun again. Lots of things to figure out. Man, we just caught a bunch on spoons. I wonder if we could catch those fish on spoons. You know, hey, we're out here in 30 feet of water. We just caught some. There's a whole bunch of boats over there and 10 on the edge of that weed bed. I wonder what they're doing. Let's go over there and see if we can catch some fish over there. So all of these things start to go through your mind. Fishing becomes fun again because it's not just about catching fish. It's about figuring out why how and how you can do something different and still catch fish. You start to fish with other anglers again, you're, you're trying to find somebody different. And this is, this is what I love about this group. I've seen guys who know how to fish a certain way, a certain body of water, ask somebody who fishes completely different, different style of fishing. So crawler guy asks spoon guy, hey, can you take me out for a day and show me how you run them spoons? And spoon guy says, yep, if you can take me out and show you how you run them crawlers. And that's what's so great about the Walleye 101 community and family is we have guys who are really good at some things, not good at other things, or really good at a body of water and don't know another body of water. And we've created a community where you guys can share with each other and help each other get better. That's the beautiful thing about what we created here. Uh, you learn new presentations, techniques, maybe a new species, right? Uh, you start to understand how patterns work. You start to pay attention to the weather, water conditions, what type of lure you're catching fish on. Uh, at this point, this is where the guy usually joins a fishing club or a group because he knows there's power in numbers. The more people you have, the more information you get, the better you're going to be. Uh, your number of fishing buddies grows and diversifies. You got guys who are bass fishermen and guys who are musky fishermen and guys who can take you smallmouth bass fishing and you're taking all of them walleye fishing. You start to really kind of mix and mingle and learn things from other people uh, and you're always looking for new information. Right? What's new? How can I do this better? What's the new this? Why is that new lure? What, I'm looking at this is new lure, why is this any better than this? Well, it wiggles different, it's got a different song profile. You're starting to pay attention to all of those little details. And when you do that, you get to step 11, where I finally say you're a fisherman. And if you've been to any of our seminars, you've heard me say lots of times, there's a huge difference between someone who goes fishing and someone who's a fisherman. And when you get to this point, if you've worked your way through all of this, you are now a fisherman, okay? Your fishing success is going to increase as you start to understand why. You're paying attention to why. Man, I just caught three fish. They all came on the outside turn. I need to go faster. All, right? all those fish came 12 or 15 feet below the surface. I'm catching more fish on a one ounce weight than I am a two ounce weight. All those things start to matter to you. You start to understand the process of fishing, pattern fishing. You're keeping records. You can tell me why you caught fish a certain day. You can ask somebody, hey, here's what I did. It didn't work. What did you do that day? You're starting to understand the process. Uh, the challenge is not a limit, but maximizing how many fish you catch each trip. Again, everybody's got 20, you got 20, no big deal. You should have got 20. I want you to have 40 and everybody else has got 20. I want you to have six and everybody else has got three. That's what this does, right? It helps you judge yourself and don't ever judge your success of a day based on an arbitrary number that the DNR sets as a limit. Don't ever, don't ever judge your success on that. Your success should be judged on how you did compared to everybody else that was on the water that day. Sometimes three fish is a good day. You're not afraid to experiment with presentations, locations, lures. Some guy says, hey, let's go try Lake Hoochie Hoochie. Yeah, okay, I'll go. We'll figure it out. You're starting to get excited again. Uh, you're starting to fish with a plan. You may go to a new body of water or get ready to go musky fishing for the first time, but you're doing some planning. You're looking at the lake, what kind of bait fish, what kind of weeds? What's the normal success? What's going on on the internet? What are the fishing reports? You're starting to look and pay attention. You're actually getting on the water with a plan. 
you're excited about going fishing every day because you can't wait because no matter how many fish you catch, if it's zero or a hundred, you know you're going to learn something every day. You're going to leave that boat a better angle at the end of the day than you were when you got in because you know you're going to pay attention and learn things. You look for anglers at the same stage. Uh, you want to share information in a way you both can trust. Hey, I'm going to talk to uh, uh, I'm going to talk to Larry about running crankbaits. I know Larry talks to me and says he's catching fish 60 feet back. I know his line counters are calibrated, right? I know he's using the right diameter line. I know he's got his speed control right. I know he's giving me good information. Okay, that's important because you can get information that doesn't help you. Fishing with a group of guys that you know is putting the same amount of effort into it and paying attention to little details, that gives you good information that you can then use to catch more fish. Uh, you love to fish. You've learned the best places, best times, best presentations to maximize each trip. If it's a crankbait bite, you can do it. If it's a crawler bite, you can do it. If it's a spoon bite, you can do it. If it's a weed bite, you can do it. You're actually able to adapt and use what presentation is best for the day. Your expectations of trip, of a trip are not based on a limit, but based on the conditions. Hey, the weather's been great for five days. We got a cold front moved in on Friday night. I'm going fishing tomorrow. <sighs> Let's put a plan together that gets us on five fish. Let's just try to get our one limit today, okay? As opposed to, oh, I'm disappointed because I didn't catch my 15 today. Set your expectations based on what you should catch not what the limit is, okay? You're a fisherman now. Once you become a fisherman, you hit a plateau. This is again, kind of our goal is to become a fisherman, but it's important that you continue learning and growing. Pick a new presentation, right? That you haven't mastered. Learn a new type of lake. Maybe you're great at Saginaw Bay, but you can't fish inland weedy lakes. Start over, go to an inland weedy lake and learn it, right? Apply what you've learned to get to this point to another challenge You'll be amazed how fast and how quickly your success goes up at both types of fishing. You're a good walleye fisherman. Go learn how to fish smallmouth. The things you learn catching smallmouth are going to translate and make you a better walleye fisherman. The things you already know about walleye fishing are going to make you instantly a pretty good smallmouth fisherman. So these things are interchangeable and they do kind of come together. So once you kind of feel comfortable that you're good at something, find something else. Go back and start the process and become good again. It'll help you be better at catching both types of fish. All right, and now we're just kind of into the sprinkles on your fishing. Right? Once you become a fisherman, uh, you're kind of there. Uh, now we're just kind of talking about some of the sprinkles. Um, a lot of guys will go to what we call a trophy hunter phase, where uh, as your success increases, some anglers get bored, and they start to search exclusively for trophy fish. Man, I want that 10-pound walleye. I want that 12-pounder. I want to get a 14-pound walleye. Uh, I want to get a 50-inch muskie. I want to get a 40-inch northern, whatever the case may be. You're just focusing on catching trophy fish. You'll travel to the best place, best times of the year to catch trophy fish, right? You're not going to Saginaw Bay in August and fishing out of Linwood to catch a 10-pound walleye. You're planning a trip to go to Lake Erie in late November, early December, depending on the weather, to catch that 12, 13, 14-pounder. You're going to Bay of Quinty in December. Uh, you're going to Rainy Lake. You're going to the right place at the right time. Uh, you're happy with one big fish over a limit. Fish three days, got a 14 and a half pound walleye. That's what I came here for. It's what I wanted to do. Great, great trip, okay? Here's what happens though. Here's where you gotta be careful with this. You're very selective about the people you fish with. There's nothing more frustrating than going, okay, we're gonna go over here and our goal is to get a 12 pound walleye. That's it. And three hours into the first day, you're fishing baits this big, looking for that big giant walleye and the guy in the boat with you goes, you know, I'm hearing on the radio, these guys are there catching a bunch of four or five pounds. Let's go over and get some small ones. And your whole goal was to catch a big one. If you're going to do this, you have to have guys go with you who are focused on the same thing. Okay, because it is hard to spend one day, two days, three days just looking for that one, one special fish. You got to be selective of who you take with you. Uh, some guys will go the competition route. And I personally, you guys know this, I've said this over and over and over. I honestly believe that you will never, ever be as good as you can be until you compete. I truly believe that you have to compete because you've got a bunch of boats on the water, same conditions you're faced with, same time frame, same everything. Somebody's going with a better answer than you are. And I guarantee you, if it's money involved, you're going to pay attention. Okay? And I don't mean derbies. I don't mean $25, let's go fishing. I mean an entry fee that hurts. That if you go fish, you take three days off to pre-fish, two days of your weekend to fish, it's 500 bucks to get in a tournament, you spend 
five days in a hotel and five days of meals and five days away from work and you don't cash a check, that hurts. That's how you learn. That's how you learn. You want to become the best anger you can be, you need to compete a couple times, at least at a level that says, if I don't win, it's going to hurt. Okay? Good anger wants to show how good he is by competing against other anglers. Great way to increase your knowledge and restart your growth because, again, feedback is instant. You know that day on the weigh-in, 120 boats face the same conditions, 119 beat you, 119 guys had better answers. Even if it's five guys that beat you, you're in sixth place. You got five guys who did better than you did, had a better answer. That's how you learn, okay? Tournaments may force you. This is what I loved about tournaments. This is the best thing that happened to me, tournament fishing. Tournament may force you to fish a body of water at a time of year that you may not otherwise fish it. We went to some places I never would have visited. The only reason I went is I had to to fish tournaments. I had to fish the whole schedule. It's the only reason I went to Fort Peck. Only reason I went to Devil's Lake. Only reason I went to Red Wing, Minnesota and fished the Mississippi River. Only reason I went to Bull Shoals, Arkansas. Only reason I ever went because I had to go to fish a tournament. Some of those places became great places that I loved and enjoyed. Some places I really don't care if I ever go back again. But I was at places that I never ever would have went and I learned things I never ever would have learned if I wouldn't have been there. And I can tell you without question, guys, those lessons I learned getting my butt kicked out there against some of the best anglers in the walleye world, I apply those lessons every single day when I'm out here fishing as a guide. And they've made me a better angler, they've made me a better guide, they've made me a better fisherman, okay? Use your knowledge to solve the fishing puzzle each day. You'll find out real quick where you're weak, what techniques you need to learn, what you're missing for bait fish movement, how you don't understand reservoir movement, okay? You'll start to learn all that if you're fishing tournaments. And then lastly, the last stage I would tell you is uh, my favorite stage, and I think it is definitely the stage that you should aspire to. Um, it's definitely not the stage that I aspired to when I started tournament fishing. Um, but now that I'm here, I would tell you it has been the highlight of my life, uh, and it has been... Uh, one of the reasons that I am uh, excited to get up every day because I know that my day focuses on one thing and that's helping guys become better fishermen. That is a pretty cool thing. Uh, in my mind, being a mentor or a teacher is the pinnacle of fishing growth. When you get to a point where you feel like you've got enough that you can share to help somebody else, that's an awesome feeling. Uh, confident enough to share what you know with other anglers who are struggling or just starting out. There are a lot of you here who are great examples that we found at a time when you were just struggling, maybe getting ready to give up fishing. You bought some stuff and weren't getting any better. You really weren't happy with your fishing. We found, you know, a lot of you guys found us at the right time. We found you, however it worked, uh, and we've been able to help you, and you've been able to help me become better anglers and kind of help each other along the way, and I've kind of been able to watch you guys uh, become, and it is, it's an awesome, awesome thing to do. Uh, answering questions helps anglers think about their knowledge, process, ideas, and thinking. Uh, makes you a better angler. I love talking about fishing because uh, Dean may say something and he'll start talking. I'm like, huh, I never thought about that. Or he may start talking, go, wait, 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 did you think about this? So maybe we go down another path because he talked about something I didn't think about. And I put in my information and my knowledge about that. And we end up at a place completely different. Either one of us would have went by ourselves, but we end up at a different place together because we're discussing our knowledge. So as you start to get confidence, you understand, and you, you don't need to know everything, right? None of us do, especially about fishing. I mean, goodness gracious, none of us know everything. But if you're confident in what you know, and that you can explain to me why you think that what you think is true, and why you think it works, then I can tell you what I think about it. We can kind of compare notes. We can come up with an answer that's probably better than the answer you have, and better than the answer that I have. Our answer together probably is closer to right. That's what I love about fishing. I love just sitting around talking. I love the boat ramps. I, one of the things I love about going to Detroit every day uh, in April and May, I, I go down to my marina. Depending on the day, there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight charter captains there, all right next to each other. And I get down there early. I'm not a big, you guys know I'm not a big morning person. You know, my charter leaves at seven. There's lots of days I get down there before six o'clock cup of coffee, there's three or four guys, and we just sit there and we just talk about fishing. What did you do yesterday? What are you going to do today? What did the wind do? What was that? Oh, I tried this. I tried that. Have you ever tried one of these hoochie hoochies? No, I never tried. I, we just sit there and we just talk about fishing every day for 50 days. My favorite time of the year, right? Other than having to be away from home, it is my favorite time of the year because all I'm doing is talking 
and learning about fishing from guys who are doing it too. Awesome, awesome thing. And that's what I love about our group. And then I believe, lastly, um, joy is what joy comes from what you help other people catch, not from what you catch. Um, when I was in at Western Michigan playing hockey, um, our trainer wrote on the board one day, and I, I wish I would have put it up here. Uh, our trainer wrote on the board one day, he used to write all these little inspirational sayings, and he wrote one up on the board one day that sticks with me every day. And if you've, if you've looked at my Facebook page, you've seen it multiple times. And it truly is one of the things, it sounds corny, um, but honestly, it's one of the things that I try to live my life by every day. And it's basically this. It says, genuine satisfaction, true respect, and eternal greatness come not from what you accomplish, but from what you help others accomplish. And I truly, truly believe that that is the source of my happiness and my joy is I get a chance every day to help you guys catch more fish. And that is something that is absolutely a whole lot funner. I still like to catch fish, don't get me wrong, but I get more joy out of watching a customer catch a fish or one of you guys say, I took what you taught me and man, it worked. Or I did this, or I did that. I learned this from this guy. Or we, you know, Joe and I talked after a seminar and we got fishing and that is where my joy comes from. And I guarantee you, as you become a better angler and you become a mentor to someone, uh, or you go further and you become a teacher, um, that is going to be where your joy comes from is helping other people catch fish. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to wrap up right here. Thank you for being here for the last five weeks. Uh, I know the foundation series is not exciting. Um, I know it's not uh, fishing and use a super secret lure and I got a super secret hotspot for you. Um, but it does lay a great foundation for you guys to be able to go out and figure out every day what you should be doing, why you're doing it, and as you do it, make adjustments to what you're doing so you can catch more fish. This foundation series we spent the last five weeks talking about is absolutely essential to becoming a better angler.